Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist. Here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. You're in the right place if you're looking to work smarter, not harder, and increase your average sale price. Again, you can go to luxurylistingpodcast.com for previous episodes or go to iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. We got a lot of great reviews out there and we're always looking to bring value to our audience members. Our audience members are individual agents with boutiques or with large franchises. This is a non-brand agnostic podcast and I'm really excited to bring on a guest today that I met about seven years ago and then we reconnected at an event just before COVID. But before I bring on Lucinda, just a reminder, if you guys have a guest or you're listening and you think you have a special story that you think could inspire other agents, you can raise the bar for the industry. Maybe you're a strategic partner. You have a, a product that you think can help agents work smarter, not harder, and break into luxury. We want to hear about it. Shoot me an email to michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. And again, if you are getting value, please leave us a like, leave us a review. We can always use more of those, whether it be on our book, on Amazon, whether it be on our podcast or other. And just a reminder, we are doing our next live in-person designation is going to be event in Milwaukee on the 21st of September. So if you're from the Midwest or you want to come to a live event, check out LuxuryDesignation.com, LuxuryDesignation.com. It will be our fifth in-person designation training in 2022. Again, my name is Michael Fido, and I'm going to bring on our special guest, Lucinda. Are you there? I am. Hey, thank you so much. I have Lucinda Gadsen. She is a top REMAX agent. She's with REMAX Pinnacle Group in Texas. Uh, and specifically, where is home for you in Texas, Lucinda? The Dallas-Fort Worth area. I live right in the middle in Arlington. You're in Arlington. Perfect. We were just down there, my wife and kids, and we went down for the Cowboys Raiders game last year on Thanksgiving. Uh, We had a blast. And so Texas is always moving. I swear we go to probably Texas more than any state. And I swear they're always expanding highways, building buildings, moving dirt. Uh, It's a big state, as you know, and uh, they have Texas has got the third most real estate agents out of all 50 states. It used to be California one, Florida two, Texas third. Now it's Florida one, California two, and Texas third. So I have Lucinda Gadsden on, and her and I met. I spoke at a REMAX conference for Texas real estate agents. There were over 1,000 there. It was quite impressive. It was it was uh, just outside of uh, Houston. Uh, what, what area do they call that down there? It's called the Woodlands, very nice part of Texas. Woodlands, yeah, a lot of upper end and luxury properties in the Woodlands, correct? Yes. So I did a three-hour training. We have, I think, four courses approved for CE in the state of Texas. We have two in Florida and one in Georgia, and we're looking to expand. But we are doing a three-hour training at the REMAX uh, conference for Texas real estate agents. And you attended that. This is in 2004. 15, 16 ish. And that's when you and I first met. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, fast forward a couple of years after that, actually in January of 2020, January of 2020, I did a full day Lux designation training. It was six hours of CE for Texas realtors. And we had over 50 agents there. And we had some, uh, some really influencers there. At the time, we had Ann Miller, who was the president of Remax Collection. In other words, Remax's luxury division. She came and she was a guest and uh, I was honored to have her there. And we had some others in the audience and and you attended that luxury designation training. So I'm just giving everybody a little context. And about two weeks ago, you called me out of the blue and uh, I didn't have you saved in my phone. And what, what was that message to tell everybody? And then I said, you know what? You have a very inspiring story. Let's tell it to others. So tell everybody about that phone call out of the blue. Well, um, 
as I had told you, I was uh, asked by Remax to open a brokerage, and uh, I have my broker's license, and um, I just happened to go to one of the events they have with the other luxury uh, designation. It's always good to get education from everywhere you can get it, and while I'm sitting around, I went to meet with Remax, with corporate Remax, and uh, and the education, but uh, as I'm sitting around, everybody's talking about your podcast and how great you are and how much you help us on this side of the coin that are wake up every day going back to work. As salespeople, we wake up every day going back to work and how you encourage us, how you teach us, how you get us to teach each other, bring us together as a community so we can help each other and and teach each other what we know and how to become better. And I was just thanking you. I just wanted to tell you, Michael, thank you. Thank you. I've had several people call me and go, what do you think about this class? Because I did a little snippet. Yeah. You, you, um, you, um, after the event in 2020, I remember you came up to me and you specifically said, you know, you didn't qualify for the luxury designation that Remax at the time promoted. And you just took my class (laughs) Um, and since taking my ca- class, uh, I've been able to land a couple high-end clients and even one luxury buyer just because of the new knowledge that I I have. Thank you so much, Michael. That that's a quote that you you gave me. And so uh, we have others out there, but so they're floating on different websites. And so you said once in a while you'll get calls from random people because uh, they Google random. you and be like, hey, I'm just verifying. You know, what what are your thoughts on this course or Michael? I am so thankful for you. I will never be able to tell you thank you enough. Oh, well, thank you so much. So, so, so I got this call from Lucinda. And so I'm like, well, tell me, what what are you up to? What, what, what's, what's new in your life? And, and so you went on to tell me since 2020, you know, you've totally changed your business model. And I thought you told me it was life changing, but you, you know, you changed your business model and you were starting to focus more on the upper price points. Uh, that and you wouldn't have done that before my class is that correct absolutely so so tell everybody a little bit about what what you look like you know pre you know your your pre michael lafito's mm-hmm. luxury designation class and post michael lafito's luxury designation class i pre uh this recording you know i asked you some some bullet point type questions and you had told me before our class uh, your average sale price was around two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and that here we true. are, two and a half years later. You took our class in January. Um, two and a half years later, you're around four hundred thousand, which equates to a sixty percent increase in your average transactional size. Is that accurate? That is accurate. Yes. You know, and that's one of our goals for people that go through our training is to increase your average sale price, whether it be the buy side or the sale side by at least 30%. So, you know, Lucinda doubled that, right? So she's at 60%. So tell everybody a little bit about, you know, how you've been able to accomplish that, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Now, remember, I took your class in, was it 2015, 2016, when Remax had you down for the three three hour a three hour class. course so that was kind of a, a abbreviated version it's not our designation class so our designation class is much longer but more importantly it comes with other access to facebook groups and and training so so yeah go ahead and tell everybody that first class what you learned in 2015. well i learned um what i learned was to become a better agent okay so even if i had that 250 uh, client, I knew how to market their their house better. I knew how to speak to people better. I learned how to um, just be better, and it made me higher quality. And um, then I became someone uh, that can, um, you know, I'm making more money, and so therefore I am working with people with, that make more money, and. Um, I became that person where I could show a house, even if it was two fifty or three hundred thousand, and I could show how I marketed that house to somebody that had a, you know, seven hundred and fifty, eight hundred thousand dollar house, and show how I marketed it, and they saw how I was better than this person from the bullet points that you gave me back then. So I thought, I, 
listen to your podcast and I'll learn little things like go to the open houses, do the videos, talk, offer. I'm lucky in my office that I have a couple of people that are like the number two agent in the state of Texas, the number three agent in the state of Texas. I was, I'm proud to be like in the top 500. I'm like, woohoo, I get to go to the party, but yeah. They are great. Sure. So I go and I do open houses on there. So I take it. A, I took what you taught me, take it a step further. And I go to their open houses on a million dollar property to meet those buyers, you know, right. and then that buyer is going to sell a house. <laughs> and usually you don't right. just walk into, you know, a, a million dollar house or $900,000 house. You usually have to sell a $600,000 house. So it allowed me my product that was 250 to the 600,000 or the 800 or the 900 yeah. and it averaged out more. Mm -hmm. Then I took your designation. Let me tell you something. I, I just shared with you, I had COVID six months and wow. I still made more money last year than I did. You know, the whole, every year in the, the since I started in real estate, and I didn't get out of bed or get out of my room for six months. With that being said, what if I parallel that to six months of vacation or six months hanging out with my grandchildren or, or six months uh, teaching my daughter? She's getting her real estate license right now. What if I teach her how to be as great as you've taught me how to be? With that being said, that there's other things I can do besides hang out with COVID for six months. Yeah. But I made yeah. more money last year than I did and the first year that you taught me I did exactly I took the video book that you gave me I took the step-by-step -step skills that you gave me and I made the platinum club the first year and the second year I even did better even 10 percent more if wow. all I can do is 10 percent more than then I've done my job yeah yeah I'm wearing a shirt that for those of you that can 10 X, right? You're always trying to do better here, right? Trying to do better. So, so you're, that's so inspiring. So you had COVID and you still did well because you had systems in the place that you learn and yes. talk to us a little bit about some of those systems, um, whether you learn from me or, or somebody else uh, for the audience, because, you know, I think the audience would like to take a vacation or, or, or take some time off with the grandkids or, or do something and still, be able to run a business like a business. So you have a small team. It's not like you have a monster team. You have a buyer's agent on your team and she works with most of your buyers. You might handpick one or two, but most of the buyers she works with. And then because you're in Texas, there's farms and ranch. You have a farms and ranch division on your team and you have somebody that really spe specializes in those, those 10 plus acre properties. So you're not talking a huge team where you got, you know, different onboarding, you have multiple assistants and all this stuff. So again, I'm trying to educate the audience so they get have an idea, Lucinda, that they too can do it, right? So you have a small team and you were still able to make the Platinum Club. Um, what are some ways you did that? Was it, is it marketing? Is it branding? Is it staying in touch with your best clients? Is it, you know, leveraging other people's properties? T tell me a little bit about some ways that you were able to do that. Number one, whenever you taught us to leverage other people's properties, because that way I was getting into the higher price points. Um, when I was doing that, I met builders also, and I started doing open houses for the builders. Guess what? If you help a salesperson not lose a sale because there's 67 people sitting in their model, and you help them capture two or three more sales, they love you and they will call you when they have a buyer that needs to sell a house. Mm -hmm. When now I was telling you about the agents in my pro in my office. So, so let's be, be, can you just hold that train of thought? I don't want to interrupt you, but I want to talk about that right there. Um, so Lucinda talked about something really important. Again, I, I say it all the time, the most listened to radio station that buyers listen to, that builders and developers listen to is what's in it for me. So how are you gonna save them time, aggravation and make more money? So Lucinda just shared a, a nugget where she has a builder, has a developer, where she's brought value to that builder and developer. So in return, when that builder and developer has a buyer that needs to sell, 
Lucinda's top of mind awareness because she's led with a giving hand. She's brought value to that relationship. So it's called reciprocity. It's that term that I use called reticulator activator. It's the part of your brain that heightens awareness of certain things. Pregnant women notice other pregnant women. Builders and developers remember Lucinda because she's top of mind awareness and she's brought value. So uh, carry on. I, I, but I wanted to really, that's a huge nugget you shared there. Sure. Yeah. Always, always remember. Yeah. What's in it for me? Get out of you and get into them. I'm not talking about image conveys trust. So always be your best, but it, nothing that anybody else is doing has anything to do with you. You're mm -hmm. just there to listen and help them get to the next step. So mm -hmm. you're absolutely 100% correct, Mike. What's in it for them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, and the next thing is I would do open houses with the, um, with the people in my office that had a house over, you know, I try to get as close to a million dollars as possible. Sure. And, um, whoever has the highest listing, but also because I am one of the top agents, in the, like I said, in the top 500 in Texas, I really do a lot of business and uh, other people come to me and he'll uh, go, Hey, can I do an open house on your property or whatever? And I always allow that. So again, the so more, you're, you're, more you're, you help you're... people, the more they're going to help you. You know, the more you can help people in life, the more people want to help you. Great point. I, I believe Zig Ziglar or, or, um, said something to that effect. So that's true. So you're leveraging your time by working open houses in those upper price points. And you're having other agents that are aspiring to sell 200, 300,000, 400,000 dollars work to open houses at yours. So, you know, you're checking off boxes to let your current clients know that you or your team is hosting open houses but in return you're hosting open houses at upper price point properties is that correct absolutely and leveraging those people that trust me and my clients and my homes i um okay at first i could not do this that's the reason why my average is about four hundred thousand. but coming into this year i do not take a client that is less than five hundred thousand. do not now, if they chose a house that was five ninety, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean four ninety, that mm -hmm. would be fine. I give it away. It's very hard to do that. It's not that I'm greedy. It's just that I'm wise, and I don't like to give away my. But you know what? Your time. So, if you're so you really referred out. Be, you ref, now, do you refer yes. out to your buyer's agent or maybe my buyer's people, agent? Your buyer's agent. Okay. And that's when we brought Betty uh, on Betty fry on this year okay because she does farms and ranches not that they're usually over the 500,000 mark but you have so many t's to cross and so many i's to dot on a farm and ranch that why don't we give that time to her because she is an expert in texas if you ever say the name betty fry they'll go the betty fry yes the betty fry mm -hmm. is helping us with our farm and ranches so uh I'm using my time wisely. If yeah. I'm going to be um, an expert in luxury, in lecture, an expert in high-end homes, I need to only do high-end homes. Yeah. So uh, people know I'm the expert. No, that's that's great. And so that was one thing that you shared with me with that random phone call a couple of weeks ago when you, you you basically said you transformed my business because I refer out, you know, sub 500 where yeah. before. You were jack of all trades, right? You, I'll take yeah. that 100 buyer. I'll take the 200. I'll do all these things. But it didn't yeah. allow you to really kind of focus on, on building that business and increasing that average sale price, which ultimately was something you were committed to. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Good. So tell me some other ways that you could. You know, I, one of the things I always say, uh, Lucinda, is grow your knowledge and your confidence will grow. So, you know, you know, you've said you've listened to our podcast. You go to other events. You're, you're constantly trying to learn. I, I, you know, iron sharpens iron, right? So what are some ways that you're, you're sharpening your toolbox, putting more tools in your toolbox today? Uh, one of the things that I uh, learned the first one, so it's stair-stepped again, is that I am going to, uh, because I am very family oriented, I go to the schools and volunteer at the schools. I bring in the Remax balloon. There's things you can do and whatever you, your heart is go over there. Okay. 
join the Lions Club, go play in the tennis or the country club. However, where I live and where my grandkids go is one of the higher ends of the Dallas Fort Worth, Dallas Fort Worth area called Mansfield, Texas. And I'm from South Lake. And I think you oh, South spoke Lake, in Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's South where Lake, I was West born Lake, and a raised. Lot of, a lot of upper price points, Highland Park. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm from there. So I have a couple of friends, you know, so I go to the alumni stuff mm -hmm. and uh, then I volunteer at the school. You would be surprised. You would be surprised at how much the teachers will want to spend on their houses. Sure. <laughs> so in those higher price points are always going to pay their teachers higher also. By the way, and also learned from you is that you decided you wanted to do luxury and you drove. What was it? Have, 45 minutes? To yeah, the place, yeah. I tell the, the story. Have car will travel. I went from my home in Wheaton, Illinois to Hinsdale, Illinois, about 40, 45 minutes. Joined that chamber yeah. of commerce. You know, did I like being in, in traffic a lot? Did I like rush hour? No. Was I late sometimes at dinner? Yes. But if you are committed, you know, you need to go where the money is, so to speak. One of my good friends, his dad, you know, my good friends, his name's Dave. Dave has taken two or three jobs, moved his family all over the country. And his dad, when he asked his dad, I got this opportunity. His dad told him, go to where the money is. So mm -hmm. I, in that case, joined an office, joined the chamber that service those upper price points. So you bring up a great point, Lucinda. That's one of the recommendations I tell agents, like if you're really committed to increasing your average sale price, join a chamber of commerce that services those areas that you would you want to sell homes in, right? Get to know those business owners, you know, bring value to those business owners. That's top of mind awareness. On one of my first lifestyle videos, I brought in a car transport with cars. And, yes. And, and that, that was from somebody for, that I had a relationship with. I'm about win-win. And if I can bring value to them, if you call upon a favor, they'll want to return it if they, you know, are truly seeing value in, in your relationship. I got a listing in 2020. It was after you came. So it might have been 2021. But let me tell you, the, what you taught me about make it the lifestyle I have a friend that owns a buffalo or used to own a buffalo ranch and okay. her and it so it went into probate and you know her and then the children of his first wife. Okay. So they asked me to do this listing. Okay, there was a hotel on it. It was a destination wedding kind of place. It was a buffalo mm -hmm. ranch. It wasn't oh. just a regular running ranch. It was mm -hmm. anyway, so with the hotel on it and the RV park on it and um uh, than the home. She had four homes on it because she had several of her family living there also, as most, you know, people with ranches do. Okay. So this was a 5.9, if I remember correctly, $5.9 million property is a hundred acres. It wasn't sure. just totally huge, but it wasn't small. Right. And guess what I did? I did exactly what you did, except I didn't do it Chicago style. I did it Texas yes, style. You I had the Sierra, the GMC Sierra coming down, the Escalade coming down. <laughs> we you had the ranches video. still on. I mean, we had the uh, we had the buffalo still on it. The you know the whole bit, the whole bit. I had a couple of people that uh, loved to ride horses. So um, you know, I told you I'm from that area. You know, yeah. that's where I was from. And I had a few people bring some horses where we got horses riding down. You know, the whole bit where the wow. aerials. It was, it was like yours. Texas, Texas style. style. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know what? I wouldn't have thought to do that. Well, and that's what we try to, you know, I, to in my that. trainings, as you know, we, we show a lot of videos, a lot of examples. So I'm trying to inspire and give agents so their creative juices get going a little bit, right? Yeah. And so so you have a video out there with this? Actually, or is yeah. It photo? No, it's a video. I have to find it, though, because I told you my broker, uh, my broker retired and so i would have to find uh, yeah. it we had to yeah. move real quick so but i could find it i have to send it to you find it send it to me and with the I'll promotion of this which we send out to our email list uh we will post a link to it if you're okay with that yes absolutely That's how awesome. fun is that that was yeah. the most fun i've ever had with a listing so i tell agents you're not just selling a hundred acre parcel in this case right you're selling a lifestyle what do you yeah. get right you're selling the emotion hot buttons safety security fun you know the area 
And that's what lifestyle marketing is about. It's not about the brick and mortar. It's not about the, you know, 3000 square foot home that's on it with the pole barn. It's much more than that. Mm -hmm. So you're an implementer. That's why we have you on Lucinda. And, you know, that's the key here. Those that are listening, I, I, I want to say this is, this is podcast 206. Okay. 206. I believe you're 206. And we've had amazing guests on. Go back to listen to some of our, our guests. Our 200th episode, I had undercover billionaire Glenn Stearns on. Uh, and so we have top agents. We have newer agents. My previous podcast, I had a guy that interned for me last summer, just got his license and, and moved to a brand new market in Nashville. Got his license May 11th, three months ago, three and a half months ago. And he's done 15 open houses at other people's properties, including a four and a half million dollar property. And he's got a two and a half to five million dollar buyer right now through that strategy that we teach. And he's three months in a brand new market. So I'm not sure what you're what's holding you back, guys. There's a lot of negativity right now. The market is shifting, recession, inflation, Ukraine, Russia. Life is what drives real estate. It's not who the president is. It's not what gas prices are. It, it's, it's move up buyers. It's downsizing buyers. It's relocation buyers. It's buyers that are doing really well financially. It's sellers that are not doing well financially. They have to downsize. It might be short sales, might be divorce situation, might be getting married or expecting needing or, or need a bigger home. That is what drives real estate. And it's not who the president is or what interest rates are. Now there is such a thing as downward pressure, right? And so if if inflation and consumer confidence isn't great, that's downward pressure. That doesn't help by any means. And there's such things as consumer confidence and the stock market's going great and interest rates are so darn low. That's what I call momentum, okay? And we've had momentum the last two years and now we have some downward pressure, but life is what drives real estate. So continue to build on your mindset. And stay confident like Lucinda's done, right? Listening to books, listening to podcasts, going to other conferences. That is what's going to be key when there's a lot of negativity out there. Um, so any any last words of recommendation, uh, Lucinda, uh, for anybody out there uh, as far as real estate in general? I highly recommend to listen to Michael's podcast, I highly recommend that you get your designation, your Lux destination. I highly recommend to get that education if you want to be a luxury agent or if you just want to be a great agent in your price point, wherever your comfort level is. He will teach you how to do that. And I highly recommend that. Highly recommend that. Well, thank you so much, Lucinda. I appreciate it. And again, if you're listening to this and you don't have a lot of luxury properties, again, we defined a high-end home as a home that's two times the average sale price in your market. So if your average sale price is 130, we want to get you a lot more of those 260s or those 390s. 390 in that average would be three times your average sale price. And we call that luxury. So it's all relative. We want you to work smarter not harder and diversify your portfolio. And many agents specialize in those entry level and average. We want you to be like Lucinda, who's increased her average sale price by 60% by applying those principles and implementing the principles that we shared. So Lucinda, I appreciate what you're doing and you're about to open your own brokerage here called Texas Remax, Texas Finest Realtors. And what's the target date for that? The target date is 18 months. 18 months out. So we're about 18 months out. In the meantime, if you want to get a hold of Lucinda, she's with Remax Pinnacle Group down in the Dallas Fort Worth uh, 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 market, right? Is that right? Yes. Dallas Fort Worth. Yes. And, and so what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? your website? Yes, you can go to lucindagatson.com or you can call me. My number is 214-463-9255. Lucinda, thank you so much. I, I appreciate it and uh, appreciate what you're doing for the industry. I'll send you a link on what we talked about here shortly. And uh, thank you so much, Lucinda. Thank you, Michael, for all you do for us.
I appreciate it. Folks, that was Lucinda Gadsden. Uh, she's doing some amazing things with Remax. She's a great person, and I'm honored that she reached out two weeks ago to share with me her success stories. We want to share your success stories. Whether you're with Remax, Cobalt Banker, whether you've taken my class or not, this is really about raising the bar for the industry. So if you're getting value from today's show, please leave us a like. Leave us a review if we've earned it or if you've gotten a value from our book on Amazon or whatever, please don't keep us a secret. And if you do a great job for your clients, you should ask the same. Don't assume they're going to leave you a five-star review. You need to ask for it. Again, my name is Michael Lafito. If you're interested in our luxury designation, you can go to LuxuryListingSpecialist.com. LuxuryListingSpecialist.com. And if you're interested in our next live event, Go to LuxuryDesignation.com. Luxury Designation, that's where our next event's going to be. It's actually in Milwaukee, September 21st. Until our next episode, my name is Michael Lofito. Keep proving others wrong, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care, everybody.